Hello everyone, and welcome to your 79th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can manipulate the key view loop within your Cocoa applications. Now, the key view loop essentially defines the order in which your application's controls will receive a key focus. So as you tab between text fields, for example, you'll see that uh, or you can shift tab between them. Basically, you'll be able to select various controls in your application. There's also a setting in System Preferences under the Keyboard and then the Shortcuts tab. This little button at the bottom will allow you to tab focus between controls. So I think by default it is off, and if it's off, uh, you won't be able to ever basically go outside of text fields and maybe a few other things. If you enable this, uh, which is one of my favorite settings, we can actually go into buttons as well. And what's even cooler about this is that if you hit the space bar when you have the little focus ring around a button, uh, it'll actually trigger the action. So if I just hit the space bar, you can see it's triggering the button itself. So uh, this really simplifies sort of your mouse movements that are necessary. Uh, it's really great for dialogues and things like that. So I'm actually gonna leave this setting on for the rest of the tutorial, but um, just it's good to know that that exists and we'll talk about uh, how you want to test with that on if you're making your own app, AppKit application, but you know you don't actually have this setting enabled. So uh, let's just start off with uh, sort of the automatic behavior that we get. So by default, the, uh, the key view loop is computed by AppKit. It just kind of determines that it should go across horizontally for the most part, and then it should go vertically down the list after it's uh, traversed everything in the horizontal axis. So that's kind of the default behavior. I'm sure there's some more technical details around that, but you get the gist. Now, what if I want to uh, kind of set this up so that it goes vertically down first instead of going horizontally across uh, every time? Well, there's a few different things we can try, one of which is just adding a separator. So if you go up to your object library and add a vertical separator in, and I haven't changed the code in any other way, you'll notice that I actually get a different behavior. It's not really a great behavior, but it is different, and it's kind of trying to go down uh, in order, but it's not really doing what I really intended it for it to do. Um, but you can see just by adding different views, different types of views, you'll get different behaviors. And the separator is kind of telling the system that, you know, there there is a change here that, you know, probably the, these types of content are distinct from each other. All right, um, let's do another change here. So I'm going to select all these controls in the left side. And I'm going to go down to the embed section here where I'm going to embed this in stack view. And then I'm just going to set some garbage constraints here. And I'm just going to rerun it as is. So now you'll notice that if I tab through, the stack view will tell the system that you should actually iterate down these controls uh, instead of going across horizontally. And this is a really nice uh, you know, benefit of using sort of the system controls to get what you want out of uh, you know, the, the system behavior. All right, um, with that, uh, let's talk about what, what happens with, when we add new views. So um, what I'm gonna do is get this button to actually add new views to the stack view. So I already have a property on my delegate that has access to the stack view. And in the app delegate, I have this function called add field, which is just gonna add uh, a new button to the uh, stack view whenever that button in my stack view is clicked. So whenever this button is clicked, we're gonna add a new button to the stack view. So if I go ahead and do this, I'm just gonna move this window over a bit, we can see that I get new, new buttons added. Now, if I go to tab, you'll see that I actually don't ever get focus on these new buttons. And if I just tab all the way over, you'll, you'll see that I never go down to these newly added buttons. And the reason for this is that the key view loop is not being recomputed when you add new views to the screen. Now, fortunately, there's a really simple way to fix this. We can click on our window here. So with the window selected, we can go over to the attributes inspector and just select recalculates view loop. And what this will change is the automatic or a recalculation of the view loop whenever new views are added onto the window. So we can see here, now I have the ability to traverse all the new elements that have been added. So generally, you don't really need this setting to be enabled, but if you're doing something where you're adding views that you want to actually recompute uh, so that you can set the focus ring on those elements, it's a, it's a good option to have. 
Another thing to note is that this uh, property in the nib is equivalent to just auto recalculates key view loop and setting that to true. All right, um, so now let's talk about uh, the most manual of manual things, which is the ability to uh, literally manually specify the, uh, the, the, the view loop. So what we can do here is we can say, uh, here is um, this view. And what I'm going to do is instead of letting the system automatically do anything for me, and uh, let me disable this while I'm here, um, instead of the system doing anything for me, what I want to do is just only toggle between this uh, text field and this text field. This is just for simplification purposes, but let's just say I wanted to do this totally custom thing, and I just want the initial focus to be on this text field, and then it to toggle between this one and this one, and just back and forth like that. How would we set this up? Well, there's two important steps. The first one is that the window needs to have an initial first responder. And so you can just grab the window. So with the window selected on the outlets inspector here, we can grab the initial first responder and set that to whatever text field I want to be the initial first responder. Then with this text field selected, all of the uh, views have this option of the next key view. And I can specify what the next key view should be. So I want the next key view to be this text field. And then if I select this text field, I want its next key view to go back to this text field. And now I've defined a key view loop. So if I go ahead and run this, you'll notice now that when I hit the tab key, I'm only ever gonna go between these two text fields and nothing else is ever gonna get automatic uh, selection. Note that I can still select different things. I haven't gotten out of this, but uh, within this, uh, the confines of how I've defined the key view loop, the, the loop is only really gonna be between these items. Notice that nothing happens if I try to tab on any of the other things. So doing manual key view loops uh, can be dangerous for this particular reason because you know if you just happen to get to a control that isn't part of the loop, now you've really kind of just screwed the user out of um, some nice keyboard focus. So just be aware of that if you're manually setting this. Okay, the very last thing that I wanna talk about now that we've talked about how we can manually set up the key view loop is how we can do this with a view controller setup. So we have an NS window controller and an NS view controller. The question is, how can the controls on an NS view controller actually get access to this key view loop? Because the problem that we're gonna end up hitting is that the window is not part of NS view controller, right? And the window needs to have this initial first responder set before the window is presented. If the initial first responder isn't set before the window is presented, it's going to assume automatic calculation. And I, I, I'm not sure of a way that you can actually get it to go back the other way once it's already been presented. There might be a way, and if I'm missing it, uh, you know, somebody can leave a comment uh, for me. But as far as I'm aware, you basically have to set this before uh, the window is presented on screen. So the problem that we hit with that is that the view controller doesn't actually have an entry point to knowing when the view controller is, um, or the, the view of the view controller is on the window. So if you try to set, uh, so let's say you, you had um, access to the window just from the view. So we could do this by saying view.window.initial first responder, right? And set something up this way. The problem with this is that um, this initial first responder uh, or sorry, this window rather, is nil at this point. So in view to load for your view controller, it's going to be nil until the point in which it's uh, set up. So for example, if I have this window controller over here that I'm manually assigning this content view controller to, and if I assume I don't have this line here basically, then uh, I'm not gonna have an entry point to having access to the window. So if uh, I go back to my view controller, view to load, the views window is still gonna be nil because it's not actually added to the window yet. On view uh, will appear, the window is still not added because it, the view is still not actually added to the window. And by the time view did appear gets called, it's already too late because the window has already tried to display itself and it's already assuming the uh, automatic compu uh, calculation of the key view loop. So. Um, the only way that I've really known to get around this is to basically have some way to access the window. You could do this in a ver variety of ways where you either um, tell the 
window controller or the view controller by the window controller and then access the window that way or you pass the window in. Um, the other way that I found is that you can basically lie to the um, you can lie to the the window in your your window controller and basically just give it a fake view to start. So you could basically just make a fake NS view here. And on the window, you could set the initial first responder to this fake view. And then once you have a fake view in place, you can basically tell the window, you know, we don't want you to automatically compute the, the key view loop for me. And then on the window's uh, appearance, you basically just swap out the, the window. So on view will, or rather view did appear on the view controller, you could just tell the window controller, hey, here's my new initial first responder, like the actual view that you want it to be. And then you can just make that the first uh, responder. So that's another alternative way. I don't really have a best practice for how this should be done, but um, these are all my various suggestions on how to do this. So the way I uh, basically set this up uh, for myself in this tutorial is that I have a property for my initial window. I set that when I'm creating my window controller over here. So I pass the window on and it is a weak reference for this window. And then um, in view to load, whenever we're setting our content view controller, so here we're setting the content view controller with our view controller. And at some point thereafter, the window controller will call view did load. We've already loaded all the controls and all the outlets are connected. So I have this initial first responder property on my view and that I have just hooked up in the nib to be tied to an item in my, in my nib file here. So I have this text field that I have tied to the view controller's initial first responder property. And then in the view controller, it's just going to get that initial window and make the initial first responder property that I've tied to my view controller nib to be that initial first responder for the window. All right, kind of a lot of sort of weird hassly things to get that done, but let's go ahead and just demonstrate uh, what that does. So I'm gonna just uh, show this here. Let me go ahead and run. And we can see here, here's that window that is created by that view controller. And if I tab between different items, we can see how we can get uh, the different items that we have selected there. And in this uh, section, I've actually automatically gone ahead and set up a manual key view loop. That's why it was going horizontally. So I don't have a stack view in this case, but probably the preferred way is just to use a stack view if you can. Then I have the property for next key view going to the button. Then the button goes to the text field and the text field goes to the button and the button goes back. Now, uh, one important thing to note is that you should make sure that you understand that the, the key view, the next key view, if you're doing this manually, should go to the buttons, right? The buttons should not be ignored. If you're just going back and forth between here, you're really gonna frustrate your users if you're setting up this manual key view loop. So make sure you're going between the buttons. And the nice thing about this is that even if, so as it is right now, you're going between the buttons in the key view loop. If you disable the preference in system uh, preferences to not do that, it's just gonna skip over it. So you're gonna get the correct behavior for all users in this case. So very important, if you're setting up a manual key view loop, be sure to include all the controls that one would expect if you have this checkbox select. So don't, don't do that. Um, okay, the very last thing I want to specify here is that we can do uh, two different things. All NS controls have the ability to refuse first responder status. So there's a property for refuse first responder. And if I select that, I can tab between different things. And you'll notice that the button was skipped out of the responder chain, right? So I went straight from this text field to this one and then down to that button. Another thing that you can do is if you're not using an NS control, but you still want to opt out of uh, for the first responder status, you can always override accepts first responder, and this will kick you out of uh, that, that sort of uh, key view loop as well. So you'll just be skipped over essentially. So uh, to demonstrate that, let me just change my button here to the subclass of the button that I overrode accepts first responder and return no. And you'll now see that both buttons won't get any uh, status. One was setting the refuse first responder on NS control, and the other one was just overriding accepts first responder uh, in general. All right, um, so that's basically uh, how you can get that to work out. Um, anyway, that's all I have for uh, the key view loop. 
there's not too much more. There's a few things with uh, tab view controllers or uh, tab views as well that uh, you can probably figure out on your own as well, but that's the general idea. My suggestions for all this are please stick to the system as best as you can. Do not try and do the manual key view loop unless you absolutely have to. Uh, like I was showing before, use stack views. Use um, other mechanisms that encapsulate the views in ways that the system can understand itself to define the order, right? If you can make a stack view for something that defines the vertical ordering that you want, then the system will automatically, uh, you know, uh, basically go along with that. And then you don't have to deal with manually setting up the key view loop because it is very finicky. And if you miss one view, you know, you could really make your users kind of mad on how uh, they can tab between controls. So that's all I have. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys in another fun tutorial real soon. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.